I'm your host, Mr. Mega Man Fan, and welcome back to the PC Engine Files. Like, share, comment, subscribe, you know all the things to do. The last time we tried Mega Man on the PC Engine, I called it my very own version of But Does It Work on Real Hardware? And as you might have noticed from the audio in that previous video, it did not work so well. You could hear the sound effects, but only just barely over complete static. Now this time we're trying Mega Man 2 on the PC Engine, and even though there are some glitches to the audio compared to how it sounds on an actual NES, it's not white noise this time, it's actual game audio, and it sounds like it's playing at the right tempo, the right pitch. It's just missing a little bit of, I don't know, maybe bass and percussion compared to NES. Maybe the wave channels aren't the same on a PC engine, so some compromises had to be made. But the sound effects are pretty much spot on, and the melodies are correct, so... I'd call that an unqualified win for this conversion of Mega Man 2 to the PC Engine. Now, this was done by the same person who did the Mega Man 1 conversion. Their blog was called PCE Dev, and if you find it and look at it today, you won't find any links to try or download this because, as I alluded to in the description of the previous video, I think they got ticked off when various uh, less than reputable websites started burning and selling copies of Mega Man for PC Engine when this was a fan project done out of love, given to the community for free, and then they started selling it for PC Engine to Turbo Graphics and Turbo Duo owners without the permission of PCE Dev, let alone the permission of Capcom. And as a result of that, not only did PC Dev stop developing anything for PC Engine, they took down the download links altogether. Now you can find it if you do some looking, and I'm just gonna tell you that there are ways to go back in the internet history and find old versions of websites. But other than that, I'm not going to specifically tell you what to do out of respect to PC dev, but the internet doesn't forget anything is all I can say about this. It's just a shame that thanks to a few selfish, greedy people, someone who was clearly talented at converting NES games to PC Engine left the hobby altogether, and that should never have happened. So I hope the people who are selling this for money feel ashamed of themselves, and they rightly should because not only did they drive somebody out of the community, they're clearly stealing from Capcom because they don't have the permission to be selling this. And since it's such a blip on the radar to Capcom, they probably don't notice or even care. But just because you can get away with doing something doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. And the prices I've seen being charged are pretty exorbitant too. They've even gone to the degree of fakery to create PC Engine style artwork and shrink wrap and when you're going that far to fake it and fool people into thinking it's a real PC Engine game, you've got to think about your ethics. You're clearly doing something wrong at that point. Now you might think it's a little weird playing this with a PC Engine controller or a Turbo Graphics controller as compared to the real thing, but honestly it works quite well. In fact, one could argue that it actually makes boss fights easier because, for example, with Bubble Man, I can just turn on the turbo switch and kind of cheese my way through this fight by just auto-firing whenever he gets into the line of view. It's not like Bubble Man was the hardest one of the Mega Man Robot Masters, which is why I usually start with him first when I play Mega Man 2, but an already easy fight just gets that much easier when you can turbo fire your lemons and take him out with almost no effort. So you may even want to turn the turbo switch off if you want a normal difficulty for Mega Man because it, it definitely gives you an advantage over playing it without. One thing that turbo fire won't help you with though is the platforming and the Heat Man stage of Mega Man 2 has some of the worst platforming no matter 
what console and what controller you're using. These little tin bots that circle around and follow you everywhere are so freaking annoying when you're trying to land on these disappearing blocks and jump over these barricades. Thankfully, they're gone when you get to the really obnoxious disappearing blocks, but it is one of the most nerve-wracking segments in any Mega Man game. Again, no matter what controller, what console, what difficulty setting, you are going to have a bad time with the disappearing blocks if you have not done it at least once before. And even if you have, it is still going to set the hairs on your arms and neck straight up because at any time you feel like you can plummet into the abyss by timing your jump wrong. And some of the disappearing blocks are stacked in the most obnoxious way, like the one you have to reach is above the one that you just jumped on. So you have to jump up before it appears and land on it after your jump. You'll see what I mean. That's one of the examples right there. And if you've never done that before and you're trying to do it over the lava or over the abyss, you are going to just mentally melt. It is, it is so, I, I want to scream profanities at this point for how frustrating this is. I almost blew it there on that point, but I managed to get through it. But it will test your nerves, even if you've done it many, many times. I'm sure speedrunners breeze through that part without a second thought, but I'm no speedrunner. I'm a very average gamer at best. I'm not going for world record times. I'm playing for fun. And that part is not fun. It's fun when you get through it and you can celebrate to yourself, but it's not fun while you're doing it. So here's our boy Heat Man and Bubble Lead. It's, it's just the most ridiculously one-sided fight ever when you've got Bubble Lead. He has no, no kind of protection against it. It wipes him out in like three hits. It's ridiculously powerful. It's his kryptonite, so I always recommend using bubble lead on him. Unless you want a challenge, then fire your lemons at him all day long if that's what you want. If you want a hard fight, you can make it harder on yourself, but I don't intend to because this is just about showing you that Mega Man 2 for PC Engine does work on real hardware. And I give the trademark to Red Hot Sonic for the phrase, but does it work on real hardware? He created it, and I'm just Johnny-come-lately here. But I'm also Mr. Mega Man fan besides being Johnny-come-lately. So thank you for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe. You know all the things to do. And I'll see you again next week for another edition of the PC Engine Files. But for now, sayonara.